Hi, and welcome to Fireground Strategies and Other Stuff from the Street, brought with, from Fire Engineering for the live FDIC edition. This podcast is brought to you by Firehouse Subs and the Firehouse Subs Public Safety Foundation. Enjoy more subs, save more lives. Ooh, I like that. That's nice. Find out more about restaurant ownership at www.firehousesubfranchising.com. How was that? I should be a commercial guy. That was awesome. That was was pretty good, right? So anyway, we're here live at FDIC. The pilgrimage to here every year is absolutely amazing. Um, First, I'd like to say how lucky I am to be able to be part of this, this whole thing. But this podcast, um, I have some great people with me. Eileen Brennan, Anthony Villa, as usual. And um, we're going to talk about a few things. FDIC is a huge, huge production. It takes employees, it takes volunteers, it takes instructors. There's over 300 instructors here every year. 35,000 people are here this year. 30,000 fire service professionals are in one city right now. That's a lot of knowledge. It's a lot of knowledge. It's It's incredible. And we're all here sharing it. Who's covering the firehouses? Well, I have no idea. (laughs) So a a couple things. I'm going to talk a little bit about my history as a young firefighter years ago. I was a volunteer on Long Island. Many years ago. And many, many years (laughs) ago. But we won't talk about that so much. But um, I used to get Fire Engineering Magazine. And Tom Brennan, um, he did the back page every month. And I used to cut the back page out every month and put it in a loose leaf binder, the three ring binder, and I would put them in and save. And I did it for years. And then sometime around, I'm going to say maybe 2007, Fire Engineering published this book called Random Thoughts, which was the name of that column. And uh, it's inspired me. I keep it around my house. I kept it in the firehouse for years and years. With us today, we have Anthony Avillo, my regular partner on Fireground Strategies and other stuff from the street. And... Ms. Eileen Brennan, and um, her dad was Tom Brennan, and Tom Brennan was instrumental in the growth of FDIC. He w- he led this uh, many years ago. Really passionate about. Oh my God! You can tell this. some stories about. Tell me about what you just said about the firehouses when you were traveling as a kid. Gosh, so my whole life, everything about growing up was stopping at firehouses, and we would um, we would. You know, be going for a family Sunday. Dad would say we're going to a park. It's an hour away, but you know, he'd want to stop at every single firehouse along the way. <laughs> and as kids, we'd be like, Dad, you can't just stop at a firehouse. They don't want you to just you don't just stop in and say like, Hey, I'm here. And you know, he he did show us that, that how much of a family you guys are because. Yeah. We would stop, you know, our 45 minute drive to the park would be three and a half hours because we'd probably stop at four firehouses. Have three meals. Have, yeah, <laughs> have three meals. Yeah. Yeah. Oh bring ice gosh. cream. That's the rule. You got to bring oh, ice no. cream when you go Don't to the park. Don't come in with your arms swinging. Yeah. Right? Yeah. Oh, God. But they would let us yeah. climb the rig. We just, that was the playground for us. Yeah. We mm-hmm. never really made it to the playground. Yeah. They, you know, as kids, mm-hmm. that's, that's what we did. We climbed all over the ladder truck. Not the yeah, engine. It's like the monkey bars. That's right. <laughs> well, a lot of truck is the major leagues. The engine right. stuff, final right. leagues. Right. Um, I know I'm going to get yelled at by a million truck. people for that. <laughs> Tommy truck, right? Tommy yeah. truck. And and it, it's great that we have you here too because you know there's a there's a lot of people who you know might have heard of your dad but never really you know one they didn't ever meet him but right. you know as as time passes like you know they the legacy. Your dad, you don't want to lose that, you right. know, because he was he was so dynamic. When, yeah. when I first did my first FDICs, he would sit in that book booth and like he would hold court, you know. And uh, I, I I had met him in Weehawken. He came to the class in Weehawken, and I saw him, and I was like, oh, "It's Tommy Brennan, man." And I, and I like peeking in, peeking. He goes, "Oh, oh, Weehawken, wow." You're Anthony Avil. Oh man, come on in. Sit down. Sit down. You got time for a story, you know? And like we would, we would just talk and talk. And he was just uh, engaging, and he made you feel special. And and that's what I always remembered yeah. about him. He made you feel yeah. special. He wanted to talk to everybody. Yes. Everybody he yes. wanted to talk to. He didn't care how many years you had on the job. No. He didn't care if you were paid or volunteer. Mm-hmm. If you had an idea, if you had a thought, he wanted to sit and listen. Mm-hmm. And he wanted mm-hmm. to challenge. 
And uh, he just felt that everybody had something to contribute. Always. Right. Yeah. That was a big deal for him. So here's a question that I asked you. And I, how come you never got on a job? <laughs> well, Did you that's consider actually it? a funny story. So there were plenty of times um, between groundings and not making the right choices. And <laughs> <laughs> because I did follow in his footsteps, that was him. Mm -hmm. But uh, he would try to talk us into joining the service. And he was like, I mean, why not? You should do it. You should go into the fire service. But back then, the only thing I really knew about it was like, I can't carry anybody down out of a built burning building down a ladder. And um, he said, no, no, you know, you'll find something, you'll do something. But that was the vision I had back in the day mm. that that's all that you guys did. And he's like, you would love it. This would be a good career for you. And I have to say, that's one of my biggest regrets because after his passing, mm. I started coming here and I started to see just how many different avenues, how much there really is to the fire service mm -hmm. just outside of the burning buildings. And I, it's one of my biggest regrets is that yeah. this would have been yeah, something that I really more, would have right? loved. Oh, wow. absolutely. absolutely. So were you also like, uh, uh, like, did you, you, I guess, visited him at his firehouse too? Yeah. We grew up, you know, going to the Christmas parties in the okay. city. The kitchen you know, table. Santa would come down from the, uh, oh, from the roof. And God, we had so many stories of uh, being kids and, you know, Santa would have a bag of presents that they would stuff in there. It was just, mm -hmm. the, it was the greatest Childhood, yeah, being the, being good. a child of a of a oh, you, you're part of a real big family, yeah. and and yeah. uh, you guys I, do it right. Yeah, you know, and and what's great too is like uh, like FDNY has I have so many of those great traditions, and every fire department yeah. does too. Yeah. Um, but but it's such a big organization, and and it while it's such a big organization, it's also got many small components to it. You know that like. Uh, you know, like like the, the family part, you know, and the, the Christmas kitchens and things like that and yeah. the cooking. And, you know, it's just, uh, yeah, I, I, I was on the other side of the river just looking across saying, that's New York City over there. Yeah. Oh, yeah. You yeah. were far, but you yeah. were on the other side. I was on the, on other, the other side. side. Yeah. <laughs> on the other side. Busy and densely populated. Yeah. My dad was a volunteer fighter, fighter when I grew up in the same thing. Chris, Santa came on a truck or an engine. They yeah. showed up and every year there'd be the, the kids in the windows. Uh, and it was the same. It kind of pushed me to become a volunteer and become a career firefighter. But those traditions live everywhere. Yeah. And I'd like to ask you a question. When did you start doing the awards for the Lifetime Achievement Award? So um, I remember there was a year that, um, that Dad won the award. So mm -hmm. we all came out as a family. And that's yep. the first time I really saw FDIC, yeah. how it worked. And um, it wasn't came... named after him at that time. Was no, it? it wasn't. He was a receiver. No, no, he didn't win his own. <laughs> what, was it, what was the name then? Was there a just name? A I think it was just the Lifetime Achievement Award. Oh, okay. Yeah. Okay. Yeah. All right. So, so we came out and and we we loved it. We we were treated really well, and mm -hmm. we got to see him win the award. And we just thought, wow, th this is where he's going in April every year. That he comes home exhausted, mm -hmm. no voice, and and we get <laughs> conference it now. voice. We, get... we call it conference right. voice. Yep. Right. We get it. And so then when um, dad passed in 2006, we were so honored that they, you know, reached out to my mom and said that we were going to rename the award and call it the Tom Brennan Lifetime Achievement Award. And we were so touched and honored that his name would carry on because he was so passionate about this particular place. He yeah. thought that, that this was the place to be. This was going to harbor so much, so much knowledge for for everybody to come to one central location, bring it back to their own departments and and continue to pass on the knowledge. But um, when Diane invited us out to present the first Lifetime Achievement Award in 2007, um, Diane and I um, had always, oh, Diane Rothschild, had, mm -hmm. we have been very close. And so I came out and spent the day and I got to present the first award and I stayed for two days and I didn't wanna go home. <laughs> and so then the next year I came out and I stayed for four days. No, you don't. Right? And I said, wow, that went really fast. I, I, we need yeah. to make this better. And so um, it just became such a great nat natural fit for me. Mm -hmm. it, it was such a, I feel like this is the best gift that my dad left was all of these friendships and sense of family. Mm -hmm. Because when someone passes, like you guys are such a part of, 
your children's growing up and they're, this is my lineage. And so when he went away and the phone mm -hmm. stopped ringing 50 times a day with firefighters and, and ideas and um, to come back here and get to see everybody still, you know, mm -hmm. almost, almost 20 years later right. is such a blessing. So yeah. I feel fortunate to be a volunteer here and to be part of, you know, welcoming the speakers to come out and- Who are your two favorites? Oh, gosh. <laughs> That's easy. Uh, that's that's easy. Say, I can't wait till you guys your get favorites here. in this room. <laughs> yeah. yeah. Oh, my but gosh. it's always a joy to come and see you. You always greet us like family. You know, mm -hmm. you're always um, mm -hmm. made. The first time I met you, you made me feel welcome. First time I taught you, it was just like I don't know. Maybe it was the Long Island thing. We yeah. have we, we, we have that so, connection. I was just listening to you do. talk as you. We're going I think through. my accent's getting worse oh sitting between god. you two. I feel my I feel my <laughs> I accent. Like, oh up. my god, it's just going like back to New York. Yeah. yeah. <laughs> well, that's how we met because that's what you said. You go, oh my god, I love your accent. Can you yell at my? That kids? is the first thing I said <laughs> that's to you. The first thing you said. I said, to can me. you talk to me more? And then I listen to your accent. <laughs> oh my god. Can you yeah. talk so to tell me kids? about Sable? Gosh. Growing, well, you know, it's funny because Dad volunteered in Sable uh -huh. because it didn't matter where we where we went. He had to be a part of. The fire department in the area but um growing up in sable was wonderful being on long island and um there was so much to do we were so close to the city and so close to the beach and mm -hmm. the vineyards and it just was really great super down to earth um the ironic thing is that the home that we lived in the longest um had been a bigger home on more than more than the spot that our house was built and um it was a big fire and dad was part of the department that came to the fire and when it burnt down and and then he just loved the place and that's where we wound up building so it, it always yeah. had some kind of connection well that, that's yeah. cool clamming that's of course obviously clamming, clamming. going crabbing, to barrett beach right crabbing crabbing right. The right, fairies. So how, how do you make the crabs so <laughs> well mom didn't like it so we would go down to west sable docks with our raw chicken and um the string, mm -hmm. and there were some nights that we caught maybe, you know, 30, 40 crabs. Yeah. And um, uh, we would have empty cases of not really soda, and uh, <laughs> we would take everything out. <laughs> and that was what we had to admit, because we had no way to transport. We thought we'd catch a couple. We had no way to transport yep. these crabs. So I think we said it was someone else's case. And uh, we, we, would, we would bring a box of live crabs home and we would be like, we're still catching. And we would dump them off and leave them in the sink and be like, yeah. mom, you know, make it. So how did yeah. you prepare them? Did you do it the Italian way or the old mom bay? Mom put it in the sauce, yeah, there as you, go. you would say. There you go. Yeah. Yeah. Crabs in the sauce. Crabs in the sauce. <sighs> Although dad liked it better when we went across to the other side on Fire Island near mm -hmm. Fire Beach and we'd put our sneakers on and we'd walk through the seaweed and kind of... Just scoop them up with the net, but oh it's great yeah, place to go it was great. for it was sure. Great. Yeah, yeah, yeah. We used to do the crab, and we'd just walk around in the water with a beer, yeah. and and the drop lines, yep. you know. And then down now, down when you go by uh, the Navasink River, there's this bridge, and you just take the boat, you go around the pilings on the bridge, and you just scoop them off the pilings. Oh really? Yeah. Oh yeah, yeah. They just hang out on a pile. Crawling around the yeah, if you're yeah. fast enough. Yeah, yeah, yeah. <laughs> yeah. Always fast enough. Yeah. Well, when they get big, they're not that fast anymore. Right. You know, but oh my God, yeah, I, I haven't done crabs in a long time, but I keep meaning to go crabbing. Yeah. And the, you know, well, I just that'll haven't. be our reunion trip. We'll do that. We'll there go we crabbing. go. All right, very Listen, cool. I am laughing so hard right now because Eileen was a little nervous. I was very coming. nervous. Yeah, yeah, okay. we're she talk was very nervous. nervous. <laughs> so we said, <laughs> talk about when Anthony and I talk, we go all over the place. So here we are I going. I think this would be crabbing. Right, we're here. We right. are talking about crabbing and clamming and. <laughs> And uh, going to the beach, and yeah. you know, this is the way we do our show. It's yeah. like it's the kitchen table at the fire. So we just talk, table. and wherever we. But that's how up. this conference conference feels. Yeah, like yeah. you're talking to your family, like mm -hmm. you're sitting at the kitchen table, mm -hmm. and you go an entire year without seeing these faces. And I have to tell you, it's I've always called this place like my personal Christmas card, like my real life Christmas card, because mm -hmm. getting to be in one place and see people from all over the world, essentially. Mm -hmm. That you built a friendship almost within the first 10 minutes of your conversation. Right, right. And they become that family. And there's just no way you would ever be able to see all of these people 
in 365 no, no, days. No, you wouldn't. No. no. And you can't get down the hallway. Yeah. No, you can't get down the hallway. That's I the best part. Right. Down the hallway. I'll meet you in five minutes is, yeah. you know, an yeah. hour later. We couldn't, we couldn't get past yeah. the book booth every three or four well, steps. Well, you can't. Everybody hey, stops hey, you. Hey, yeah. No, no, no. Him. Yeah. Him. But, you know, it's, um, I can't, like I said at the beginning of this, I cannot believe I'm actually blessed enough to be a part of this yeah. whole thing. Yeah. I it sometimes have blessing. the imposter syndrome. I go, I can't believe they bring me back every year to speak here. Yeah. And I just left the classroom. Everybody loves you. They don't know me. They do. <laughs> the nicest guy they in the fire service. He, you, you are the nicest well, guy. I've never seen you mad. It's not pretty. <laughs> I don't think I've ever seen you mad. I've never either. seen him I tell mad. you what, I used to tell my guys at, at the firehouse, I don't want to be in a jerk, but I know how. So don't <laughs> make me be a jerk. And that wasn't the word I used. All right, um, all right. But I'm at FDIC, so I'm going to be nice. And if it comes out, it's it's not pretty. And I'm always mm -hmm. I always feel bad about it because I don't ever get there. But when I get there, I'm over the top. But we've you know, been my name's it, Duffy. So that's good. <laughs> right. what? What? He you said know. his name's Duffy. You know, it ju it just comes out. You know, and and it's interesting. Can it we bring Kevin another? Uh, go. Yeah. We have another guest coming in. But anyway, join us. Kevin. Yeah, Kevin. So. Um, it's interesting. I come here and I just left a, a classroom and I'm standing room only to come room listen only. to me speak. Yeah. And yeah. I'm like, well, what I'm talking about, I'm just very, very small in this big cog. You know, I think of all the people who, who speak here, yeah. you know, and, and I'm amazed that I get to be a part of it. And we have a new guest but, joining us. But what, what the best part is, is that there's so many genuine people here like you that are enamored by their fellow speakers in the same way yeah so well, i'm going to now, stop you here for yeah, one ahead, second kevin. we have kevin shea joining us another one of the great people Greatest. who mm -hmm. speak here and one of the volunteers to make this happen another one of the so, nicest guys in the fire another one of the nicest probably, guys probably yeah he, you, it would be tough between you two it would be tough between yeah. these two yeah but what i do have to say is that everybody here i remember the first time i spoke here um I had no saliva for the first 15 minutes. I'm telling you, I was terrified. I can't we, believe I'm yeah. here. So everybody here, it's not like a, other organizations. They root for you. They want yeah. you to be successful. Yeah. I'm sitting here with all these greats, including your father, and they, they're rooting for everybody to succeed. You know, there are a few people who have maybe little egos, but I'm, when I say few, it's yeah. minimal. Mm -hmm. um, you know, and I remember John Salker one day, he pulls me aside, goes, you have arrived. Those were his only words that he said to me. And, you know, I was a volley with John on Long Island uh, 40 plus years okay. ago. We, yes. we, we were in the same volley house for years. Yeah. So oh, tell us a little bit about you and your volunteer and how and why you do what yeah, I'm you sorry do. I, I jumped in late. Uh, no, okay. we're, we're happy you joined us. I have a yeah. very important job here. I put out the signs, I fill the water pitchers, and not everybody can get those signs just straight. Hey. <laughs> People waving. <laughs> uh, um, so, yeah, uh, my time here, I think we're all coming from a different place. What we get out of it is going to be similar. But for me, and um, some people would understand it, when you have to be removed from the fire service too young, you don't want to be. I tell you, I don't know how to explain it. It kind of leaves a hole in your heart. And... Um, People will joke with me now, oh, you're the avid hunter and fisherman, I hunt and fish all over the world and all that nonsense. It's a consolation prize. It, mm. I, I missed the fire service. But you're a firefighter. I would never have left. And by coming back here to FDIC and the training stuff I do on the side keeps me active in it. Mm. And this has become like um, old home week. Where, uh, you know, yeah, so, exactly. I'm seeing guys from 108 truck. I hadn't seen in years, decades, some of them. And instead of it being like just some random memory from your past, they're my friends today. I can keep up with their wives and their kids as if I was in a firehouse. To me, that's invaluable. I don't know how to put a price on that. You can. Um, as far as when you mention the egos, I mean, I've I never seen it before. There's a rumor that some <laughs> firemen have an ego. I'm not saying I've seen it, but um, that actually is very minor here. It's this big. It's tiny. Yeah. And... Um, uh, I love that Eileen is here. I know I'm coming in late. I had to do some stuff with the class change. 
But were you talking about her dad? You yes. missed it. Yes. I'm sorry. She was yes. awesome. She was not nervous at all. She did a nervous. great job. But yes, <laughs> a girl. where you're going, why don't you tell us about your time with Tom and all of that, what you knew of this man? Well, you know, uh, for me, Tom was like the generation before me. Like he's uh, young, I think he'd be younger than my dad, but maybe not by a lot. Right. But he, he still, he was that generation. So Tom was the generation that I looked up to, but wanted me to be a fireman. It was my dad and guys like Tom and that time. And then when you meet a guy like Tom and you've looked up these people as your idol or your heroes, mm -hmm. Tom's the first one that shows you that he's not better than you. He's not different than you. He may have gone to more fires, but it's just, here's what he learned. Here's how you can do it. He wanted to help you. Um, and that's very important. If I'm ever teaching someplace, I don't like if they think you're special. Mm. We'll point to Tom, he's special because then they think that me or Tom or anybody else did something that they can't do. Yeah, and good point. That's not true. Right. Which is, mm -hmm. First of all, it's not true. Mm -hmm. Every generation, the probies are smarter and stronger than the generation before, you know? And that's the goal, right? Absolutely, that's it's the, the goal. That is the goal. And your dad never talked down to anybody. Right. Always made them feel good yep. and welcome and like they could do anything he could do. Your dad was a gem. Yeah. I miss him. Yes. Yes, yeah. I do. And he was sharp as a tack. Oh, my God. He was the sense of humor. Listen, I, I, I encourage anybody, just go on YouTube. Yeah. Go on YouTube and type in Tom Brennan or, or Brennan and Bruno Unplugged, and oh. you will you could sit for hours with those videos and you know the the, the banter back and forth and uh, just 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 a genuine friendship between the two of them as well. Yeah. You know, and and the love of the fire service. You know, uh, if, if you're a younger person and you were never exposed to you know Tommy Brennan and Alan Brunacini and some of these. Uh, older guys that aren't around uh, anymore, um, unfortunately. Uh, you need to do that. Yeah, there's you still need some valuable lessons in there. Oh and and that's, that is the neatest thing that I, people will, an, another part of the gift of being here is still being able to hear some great stories that I would never have heard mm -hmm. had I not become a volunteer here. And um, a lot of people say like they'll yeah. they'll read an article and still pick things up to this day or, um, you know things like that yeah oh the book this the book i'm going to say this again i'm going to repeat what i said when i first yeah. talked about this i used to anthony used to save these in a, a three ring binder it's a great everything is a five minute read yes and yeah, every quick. one of them yes. is little pearls of wisdom that you can take with in you in a street yes. smart kind of way oh my right gosh. like and the thing down. is that i'm not i don't mean to be disrespectful no. but it's a great bathroom book Yes, it really is. <laughs> they're they're I, I, two, yes. pages, two pages, two yeah. pages, and they are each one is packed with wisdom. How you could take that much and put it in two pages? Yes, it's like, and I used to share them with people. You know, right. make mimeograph copies of people who didn't have a subscription to fire engineering. Read this, read this, read this. I'd leave them all over the firehouse when I became a career yeah. firefighter. Yes, and they're still relevant today i learned so much about about truck work and being a truck guy from that mm -hmm. you know just just everything that was there and, and i also remember his forcible entry videos yes you know which oh. were some of the first <laughs> I videos popped one in recently yeah it was one of yeah. some of the first Did videos you? Some I of the ever first. Saw, yes. you know and 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 i actually still have one on a, on a vcr tape you know and, and yeah it's just you know yeah even to this day it's still you yeah. know there's still something to learn you know because yeah. Conventional forcible entry is still conventional forcible entry in, in so many ways. You know, it really is. It's no magic. No. no. Well, it, it is magic. No, but there is, you know, no new technology that they're coming out with. All of it is going to replace it. And no, You then, can't do it with your cell phone. Right. No. And back then but, there were no bells and whistles, right? Well, and, so everything you know, was, there There was no apps. There was no, there was no lights and camera fancy it was walking no. out with a tool Wasn't like and just shooting it straight yes the universal and, key the halligan right, right. yeah and, and right. like how many people you think have tried to make a better tool than the halligan oh. and you just no uh, you i just think can't. i still have it by you the way can't. i still have that one from the videos too Really? Yeah. The original. Wow. Halligan, yeah, original. Man. I wonder if it's a you, it. you Halligan. Don't. If it is, don't bring it here. Okay. Yes. Yes. It'll be Jersey. Might I didn't steal think I would it. Get it on the plane. When you go home, look at it and see if it says 
you have it. Okay. Yeah, somebody in those things are worth. Steal. I'm not saying you should sell yeah. it. It's a collector's piece. Right. Mm -hmm. Right. Yeah. Yeah. But the, uh, you know, it's it's it, it, it again. It's it's like old home week, you know. And um, I, I always tell a story. I'm going to tell it on the air now about my Kevin Shea story. <laughs> <laughs> okay. What did I do? Okay. No, in the last time. <laughs> Oh, that was good. I, I was teaching in Alaska, and, and uh, I was up in Valdez, and I had my daughters with me, and we went, we were going into this pizza place. And uh, as we're going in, this line of guys comes walking out, and all of a sudden, last guy in the line, because I'm holding the door, last guy in the line, Kevin Shea. Like, in Alaska. That like, is like, crazy. Yeah, how do you, I, I was looking, and thought, I, like, it didn't even, like, register right away, and I'm going, well, both of us, what are you doing here? It was like so it was crazy. Funny. Yeah, it was funny. You were like salmon fishing, right? Yeah, there's a part to this Halibut? that the part of this story. It's even funnier. And he doesn't know. So I was with a bunch of Navy guys. They were retired. And they, did you notice the crowd? They were pretty big guys. Big guys. They were all big yeah. guys. Yeah. Oh, and yeah. it's hard to say, but uh, you know, sometimes pizza bars also have the bar, not just the pizza. So my <laughs> brothers were uh, feeling good. So, <laughs> so they're ahead of me. And that bar can sometimes be a rough place, which we knew that. Mm -hmm. I don't know if you knew that. No, no, yeah, no, you wouldn't have known that. Yeah, I wouldn't have bought my daughter's. <laughs> no, we're, we're going out the door. That's a good And point. he just sees me, starts yelling a couple of f bombs, Kevin. Oh, no. They're like, what? And they start running back. Like, no, 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 no. He's a friend. No, 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 no. no. He's don't kill friend. him, please. Yeah. So I didn't know. Oh, no, no, no. Yeah. Oh. Nice guys. That was ago? fun. How many years ago is that? Three years ago, maybe? Yeah, yeah. Oh, wow. It was after right it was about COVID. These. Yeah. Yes. It was right after COVID because they didn't have a hall. So I had to teach yes. on a ferry. Oh, wow. Yeah, yes. which was wow. really, really cool. So, yes. Yeah. So it was like 2021, maybe, something like that. But it was, yeah, it was it was just great. But again, there's, there's the connections, the fire service connections. And, you know, you know, how many times do, do you know, do they, you know, my, my ex-wife or, or my girlfriend now say, how do you know somebody everywhere we go? Yeah, I you know. know yeah. You're always I'm that, that happened to me just recently. I was down in South Florida, and I was standing online for a drink, and um, there was a guy behind me, and I think he had a firefighter shirt on, or I, I started a conversation. And I was just, mm -hmm. oh, my, my lineage is a fire department also. And we, after three sentences, he's like, oh, yeah, I know your dad. <laughs> and I'm like, oh, oh, okay. He was a, he, I think he was like an ice slip guy or something, but he was a fire marshal, which mm -hmm. I don't yes. know much about. But the woman that I went, that I was there with, she was like, wait, 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 wait. that guy just knows you? I'm like, well, he doesn't know me, but like, this is what the fire department is. Everybody yeah. is connected and everybody's family. It's hard family. to explain. And she yeah, said. Yeah, you can't explain it. it and I had just really told can't. her no. that I was getting ready for this trip. And so that was the perfect example. Okay. Everybody becomes family. It yes. Is, yeah. Just grows. Yeah. I mean, this this trip is it's one of those things where you know you're a month out, you're three weeks out. You know, it's, it's almost like waiting for Christmas. You know, it's the, the the closer you get, the the longer it seems to be taken, and it's like everybody's in the airport and you're seeing people in the airport, and and you know, and here we that are. That is when you start looking around and getting excited, right? Yes. Is that the airport? You is look it the to airport? see if any anybody's on your connecting flight. Yeah, yeah. The, the connectors is where you really see it. I flew from Connecticut to Atlanta. Yeah. Everybody on the plane from Atlanta was a firefighter. I'm yes. not everybody. I'm going to tell you there was 180 wow. people on the plane. 150 of them were firefighters because it was yes. coming to Indy. Yeah, yeah. You I mean, know, who else and the stewardesses love yes, it. And the right? stewardesses yeah. know it. Um, oh, flight attendants. I'm sorry. I have to be politically correct these right, days. Right, but uh, it, it is amazing. And... Um, you talk about how you welcome any firehouse. You said your dad used to stop. My wife and I were in D.C. And traffic, I mean, traffic. We were in the car for like five yes. hours. It was just horrible. And she's got to pee. So, <laughs> so we get off the highway. We're in a ghetto. And when I say in a ghetto, we're in a ghetto in D.C. So I see the flag like two blocks away. I go, here's a firehouse. We'll, we'll go there. So I pull up on the front. And I kind of rap on the door, the little man door next to the bay doors. And I go, hey, listen, my wife's really got to go to the bathroom. Can you use the bathroom? She goes, she's not going to like it, but she can certainly use it. My wife's like, what is wrong with you? <laughs> you got, you know, what am I going to do? Find a McDonald's? And, Better. You know. Did you, did you bring any food in with you? I, I was literally, <laughs> no, I had no ice cream. I had nothing to, to bring. You know, and that's a funny story, you know, bringing ice cream. 
right after 9-11, a good friend of mine worked in Rescue Force. So, you know, I wanted to see him. He was really having a hard time with it. And he's, so I brought some ice cream. So I bring him to the firehouse. And I tell the guys, I'm not staying for dinner. I just want to drop this off. So he goes, hey, come on. He opens the freezer. It's full of this probably 20 cartons of ice cream in the freezer and pastries in the refrigerator. <laughs> he goes, you having dinner? I go, no, I, I got to go. And, and the guy goes, you don't come into my fire. He says, all right, I'll have a little. So they gave me two half chickens and a pile of french fries. You don't ever come into this firehouse and say, I'll just have a little. Just and then I reached for my wallet. They almost broke my hand. Oh, my God. You know, it was. So did you guys just feel that, like, I, did. I sure man? did. I, I think somebody was reeling something by. All right. All right. Just, so. We had the earthquake. Yeah, you're a little outside. nervous being <laughs> from New Jersey. Like, Wait a minute. Wait a minute. I was in Jack Murphy's class when that happened. We really? We were in Middlesex County Fire Academy, and Jack Murphy was teaching a, a toll buildings class. And all of a sudden, the screen starts shaking. And then the floor starts shaking. And he's like going, what, what's going on in here? And, and everybody's like going like this. And it's rumbling. Like it sounded like a freaking freight train. And it stops. It starts again. It stops. And we're like, is that an earthquake? All of a sudden, everybody's phone is lighting up. There's, yep. you know, all the all the breaking yep. news things go yeah. off. Man, I was like, holy! Oh, I had never experienced yeah. that. They don't have them in Montana, do they? Uh, they had them. I haven't felt them. They're so minor. Them. No. Oh, it's okay. when he kills a big elk and it goes. Boom. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. I'll tell you what. I love that place. I'm happy there. But Good I missed the fire Beautiful. department. Terrible. It's like the best Terrible. of both, yeah. though, right? You yeah. get to come here. Yes. And then go back out to where it's so beautiful. And it's funny when you're talking about the camaraderie in the fire service, I just gravitate to firemen naturally wherever I am. That's who my hunting friends are. Valdez, the fire department, Tracy Rayner is the right, chief, right. Mike Weber and the other guys mm -hmm. there. Mm -hmm. I go fish with them this June. I go every year. I went hunting with them in the fall. Oh, wow. Um, out in uh, Montana, my partner, a small training company, is the chief of Helena, and he's a fly fishing guide. And oh, wherever I go, um, I was just with Castros. Uh, oh, great. Fly fishing out in California. Oh, I was supposed to be doing some work. And we yeah. Sneak right off. If my boss ever knew, it's like a little kid playing hooky from school. I haven't changed. Mm -hmm. yeah. Yeah. I'm with the company that's repping Perimeter Solutions, repping Scott, repping Lion. What do I do? I bring a fly fishing pole with me. I'm like, yeah, yeah, you want to see some foam? <laughs> want to see how it works on that blue ribbon trout stream? Let's go take a look at the water flow. I don't know why they keep me as an employee. I'm a disaster. <laughs> you, you bring them business. Here's you a have question. a very identical Bible does, face. Does Castro's fish from inside the car? No, he did. He fished. He was good. Did you understand? Did you catch that? Did you, uh -huh. you know, well, Cash shows is an inside the car command post guy, uh, and and I'm a street command post guy, so we go back and forth all the time. I had I always I had a, I had slides like you know safe space command posts of the sissies, and uh, Frank Ritchie was saying command from afar is far from being in command, and I used to say then somebody never coached a game from the locker room. I hope he's not listening. Oh, oh it's it's okay. Oh, say right to his yeah. face. Hey, well, you know, I'm going to have fun with this. Yeah. Yeah. Oh, God, yeah. Oh, yeah. Thank well, you, brother. You just gave me a good one. Oh, yeah. yeah. It goes on and on. His class and my class, on and on. And and the cool thing about this, this program, we've been doing this now for years, right? If I'm ever anywhere near where he's teaching, or, and he's driven an hour, an hour and a half to come to my class, to walk into my class and say, Everything this guy says is bullshit, and he walks out. <laughs> so we're, I did it in his class this morning. He wasn't nice. he wasn't here the other day to do it in my class, but you know we've done it the Silver Nail and then Castro. I mean, like it's just yes. one of those of excuse. So it's just one of those and things. You know what? That it's it's it really the students love it. Uh, the they the laugh. whole class was, was laughing. It was know? just it's always fun. I actually made a little meme of it where I was actually teaching here. It's a picture of me teaching, and I'm pointing at something. I don't remember what it was. And then I have a picture of him, and above me is one of those bubbles, the bubbles, speaking the bubbles, speaking oh, bubbles yeah. in yes. comics, and it says, everything that guy says is bullshit. I have a little meme that I post. <laughs> when he's good, not around, good, good. I made a slide out of good. it. And I put it in my class, and sometimes right in the middle of the class, I forget it's there. The slide pops <laughs> yeah. up, and I'm like, oh, all right, so this, <laughs> this is my grandbrother. Yeah. <laughs> so, that's and awesome. Oh, my God. Again, yeah, it's, no, it's just, it's just the best. It's how we, again, the family, the friendship. 
Um, how we hooked up was doing um, a video series for Fire Engineering. I was going to ask you how yes. you two. And, um, yes, Frank Ritchie got us. Myself, Frank Ritchie, Chris Pepler, unfortunately, God rest mm -hmm. his soul, and PJ Norwood, and Mark Howe. We had Mark Howe in turnout gear in some... Now, this wasn't a 1403 burn. It wasn't a training burn. So we had couches and armoires. And, yes. You know, we were, we were pushing the envelope a lot. And we actually put GoPro <laughs> cameras inside and broadcast it out. And then we would let the room flash over. It would incinerate the camera. But we'd have all that video, the fire behavior. To, but Mark Howe, I had him inside places that some of my guys have never been in. Yes. I mean, Mark was on the floor with a thermal imaging camera and his recording gear underneath the turnout code. <laughs> oh, my. He goes, is this what it's like? Oh, he goes, you guys are nuts. Well, now he's a volunteer firefighter in, in yeah. Washington. That's a great story. That's a great story. Yeah. 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 Mark, is, yeah. Mark is wonderful. Yeah. But, but that's where we met Frank Ritchie at a cast at the time. Yeah. I think it fallen down off a roof or something. I don't even know. But that's yeah. where we met. And we had all these burns. We made the, the videos. And uh, at the very end, we burned the house right to the ground. Yep. Right to the ground. We and then the they put us together on the podcast, the two yeah. guys with oral diarrhea. We both talk too much, you know. <laughs> Maybe I'm worse, but yeah, but are. we have so much fun doing, you know, the Fire Ground Strategies podcast yes. for Fire Engine. It's just, we don't plan what we're going to talk about. We just, I we might say, yeah. oh, let's talk about how chiefs who don't go to training. That's what we talked about the other we day. We talked about that the other day. It's going to uh, air a couple well, of weeks. Hard, but, but then we, we just go all over the place. <laughs> we, we filmed it before the FDIC, but it's going to, show after the FDIC. So now we're trying to talk like not in the future and in the past. <laughs> it, was, it was crazy, man. But it was, uh, yeah, it's, it's just, this is just, just such a great experience, man. And uh, so I think mixing the social with the training is important too. I was telling you just, you know, things fall out how they fall out. I had a consolation prize, not going to fire. So I hunt and fish. So what do I do? I gravitate to other firefighters to hunt and fish. Remember Buster Cooper? Oh, yeah. Buster Cooper owns with Buster ducks. Duck, yep, duck busted. Hunting. I he still has a have firefighter a Busted hunt. Duck. Yes. Oh, yeah. sure. When I was out with Castro's mm -hmm. um, fishing, a guy named Justin Velasquez from uh, Redwood City, California, is a professional fishing guy. He takes us. So here you are, supposed to be on this great river to fish and fly fishing with a pro. All we're talking about is firefighting or rescue techniques. And it's good because it takes some of the, I wouldn't say the pressure off, but you're not in, like if you're in a class, you've prepared for the class mm -hmm. and you've got what you're presenting and you got to get through that material. You have mm -hmm. X amount of time and you want to make sure you don't do too much that the people can absorb it, but not too little. I'm your student. I want to make sure I get everything that you're saying. I'm trying to stay focused, not what if this, what if that, mm -hmm. focus on what you're telling me. But it's kind of a rigid it has to be structured yeah, yeah, to get the class yeah, through. Right. When you're out just like this, socializing is like I am on a hunting and fishing trip. Anything like your dad's random thoughts was his right. you know, signature term. Randomly, the things pop up, and it's easier than the structured class because you can kind of go all over. You're not really going on a tangent. You're going, well, while I was at this incident, that happened. Mm -hmm. So it's not getting off topic. It's just right. that's how the fire service is. Things randomly happen. So here, you're able to see all these different instructors. They say, take what you need and leave the rest. Grab what you like from a class. If you have trouble, you might be able to find a guy teaching a similar subject from a different point of view. Right. doesn't make one right or wrong, right. but a different mm -hmm. outlook on it. Or maybe he had a different incident where that worked and that didn't work. So coming here and seeing it all at once mm -hmm. is, is wonderful right. to share it. Then you go to those tables that like those mini round tables in the speaker room. Uh, There'll be a bunch of chiefs. They'll be discussing, well, why they like that, why they didn't like that. But in a respectful way, I haven't really heard anybody. I wouldn't tolerate it being bashed like that. Yeah. Right. So you're still sharing information because maybe the instructor, hey, there's a point of view I didn't get. But 100 mm -hmm. students, I can't ask for everybody's point of view. I won't get through the class, you know. No. That's yeah. the atmosphere here. It's yeah. been absolutely but wonderful. But do you notice that some of the best part is that some of the conversation is yes. with the older generation yes. who are the chiefs or the retired, and, and yet they're still learning from each other, right? Because the, the, the idea is you never stop learning. Never stop learning. Once you no. say you know enough, it's over. 
Yeah. So wrong. you, the FDIC is to always continue learning. Doesn't matter how long you're on the job, how new you're at the job. So if you're fortunate enough to be in the speaker room, which is where Kevin and I get to volunteer, mm -hmm. the amount of interesting, intelligent, challenging knowledge that's being shared, you, you walk by and you just can't even believe you're part of that conversation or listening to the conversation. Yeah, and, and, and then new topics are formed the constantly. Experience. That just goes through that exactly. room, and, yes. You know, and then you see all the different people at different tables, and you know, yeah. the, the conversations are all. You know, you can right. sit here, and somebody's talking about one thing, and they're talking about yeah. something else, yeah. and yes, it, yeah, it is. It is and I shouldn't say priceless. that because it's not just all the knowledge is is only in there. Oh, oh no, 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 I no, learned from no, my right. student. No, we didn't right. take it that way. No, no those no, conversations no. spill out, and then sometimes I, I mean, I used to remember my dad saying that some of his best conversations. Oh was grabbing somebody at a job mm -hmm. and hearing what they have to say yes. and, and going through those challenging conversations mm -hmm. and why why do you do this and trying to see what they're going to say and pull it pull it on out of somebody who's younger and say all right let's let's do something with this and you're very observant yeah. i mean yeah. yeah i like firefighters would understand what you're saying but right. you as never being in the fire service and watching your father you understand absolutely who we are and how that should to watch watch bill guston yeah, brilliant. Bill Gustin, the first time I ever had him in my class, I was gem. in Louisiana. Yeah. He sits and takes notes, oh, pages and pages of notes. He's listening to me, and then he to yesterday listened about, and he's got a notebook full of stuff just from the last couple of days. Yeah, and he reads yeah. it. Yeah. Oh yeah. yeah. You know, yeah. that's a man. You know, we should all be more like that. Yeah. Listen, listen, listen to this young lady. Listen right. to him. Listen to Kevin. You know, oh, and everybody yeah. else. In your class, they have something to say. Mm -hmm. You know, well, and it's, that's but you know, you try and encourage that too. Like, yeah. you know, there are so many people here, and and a lot of you know, look, just because I'm standing in front of this classroom doesn't mean you can't. Right. You know, right. like like you know, find something you're passionate about. Like, get write an article. Yep. You know, get get something into us yes. here, and and you know, and and put in for a class. You know, and and uh, I mean, how did we all start? We basically all started the same way. You know, how do you get involved in this? You know, and and people ask me, well, how do you how do you write a book? You know, and I'm like, well, you know, you write a book one page at a time, and if you get stuck, it's one paragraph at a time, and if Just you get stuck, it's a sentence at a time. Yeah, yeah, you know, like that's all I ever do is like if when I finish one. Uh, uh, edition, um, I would just start another file and I'd just be putting notes and notes and notes. And by the time I was ready for another one, it would be like, you know, 15 pages long, you know, you throw some stuff out and, you know, but you know, people, you know, people shouldn't be this, you know, like, like, you know, write an article, you know, write an article, put, you know, put in for a class, you know, it's maybe you don't get it the first time, but you know, we're all here because we did right. that. You know? Or somebody pushed you. Somebody you know, like Frank was talking nudged, about yeah. last yeah. night. I called him before we published his book even, and we used to communicate online about command stuff. He had a command ops website. Mm -hmm. It wasn't really like today's websites. And we used to communicate. The chief comes to me and goes, you know anybody does leadership class? I go, I got a friend who's writing a book called Step Up and Lead. Um, he probably has a class. So I call him, can you come teach a class? He goes, yeah, I'll be, I'll come. He wrote it. He wrote the class for my department. And look where Frank is today. Yeah. He's brilliant. Yeah. And on the other end of that, Frank Ritchie made me submit to FEIC. He goes, you should put him for FEIC. I go, I've been there a hundred times. I, go, I can't do what they do. Right. He goes, I've watched you. You can do it. I go, no, Frank, I'm not going to do it. So I'm working at the firehouse. Frank lives in a district I was a battalion I didn't know chief that. in. Okay. So he brings his laptop to the firehouse. And he goes, I'm on the page, put in for your class. So I did it, and I really just knocked it out in five minutes. It didn't get accepted. So now I'm thinking. So I thought hard what I was going to do the next yes. year, and I wrote a real proposal. And, yes. and I've been here since. So somebody pushed me because mm -hmm. you don't have confidence in yourself. There's so much knowledge here, like you said, in this room is going to be the next Tom Brennan. Yeah. Well, Absolutely. And that's yeah. You know, yeah. Tom would tell you that. Yeah. And so That's it's here, goal. but you have to make the leap. Yeah. I am not as loud as I talk. I talk all the time. I'm is, not that. 
comfortable yeah. in the law. I have a question yeah. for you guys. This uh, I'm not familiar with the podcast stuff. Will this be heard like today, or can people hear? It's this? actually live now, right? Okay. And then you can get it through okay. archives later. Okay. So people here at the conference can hear this. Yes. There's a great class. I think Diane calls it. Um, so you want to be an author? I think yes. that was something mm -hmm. like that. And it's on the last idea. session on Friday. Mm -hmm. And I would encourage anybody to sit in on that. It has to do with both being an author for a Phil. Uh, <laughs> uh, be an, uh, an author. Phil, go to this class, brother. I hope you're listening. <laughs> be the, hey, Michael. So, um, uh, to, so you want to be an author is a great one because it'll address both writing an article or being yep. a speaker here, you know, as a class. Yep. And a lot of people can get discouraged because from you might know better than me, Eileen, but I think Diane said like um, – in the magazine, everybody would like to be in the magazine that mm -hmm. wants to write. Right. That that could be booked out a year and a half, two years with articles. Right. But then something comes up like a few months ago, a collapse in the Bronx might jump the list. If they have um, some people locally took pictures on their phone to get a guy to write, it can mm -hmm. jump the list. Yeah. In the meantime, instead of being discouraged that year, a year and a half out, the website is constantly looking for articles. Yes. If constantly. Pete Brooklyo could get you into that yeah. right away, mm -hmm. and then they a lot of their speakers are chosen from people who had written for them before. Mm -hmm. There's no hard barrier to get through now with the internet. Yeah. So much is published. Mm -hmm. Please yeah. attend Diane's class and you'll yeah. get the tips on so it. So she also spoke at the um, at the instructors meeting before the hot sessions yes. that I, I was lucky to sit in on. And there was a lot of great um, knowledge shared there as well. Diane got up and spoke and said, you know, submit something, submit your idea. You don't have to be a great writer. That's what the editors are for. So don't don't not submit an idea because you're afraid that your writing might not be, mis yeah, yeah, whether right. it's grammatically or, you know, you just feel like it doesn't translate doesn't well flow. from your yes. idea. Mm. And that's what they do best, right? Yes. So yeah. get your ideas on paper, submit something. Yes. And guess what? If it gets turned down, do it again. Yes. Mm -hmm. Do it again mm -hmm. because I, I I would bet most speakers in there have had things turned down oh, yeah. by oh, yeah. by oh, here. Yeah. Oh yeah. Right. Yeah. Yeah. So. Yeah. So. Um. Not for here. Okay. <laughs> I I have helped edit it. What's your excuse? Um. Probably topic. Although if if I could write about how much volunteering here has has made my life better mm -hmm. more fulfilling mm -hmm. um purpose um i would do that i would do that you should also talk about your other volunteer work ms mommy oh. <laughs> well i do i do love to volunteer well i think you should talk about that um um i'll make it short that um my sister who is brilliant and much different than myself, surprised us all by wanting to check off one of her um, boxes in life. Mm -hmm. A lot of times mm -hmm. girls in my generation thought, you know, flash mobs were fun. And so her little town in Connecticut celebrates Halloween and in style, right? They go all out. It's kind of like Christmas. So I, her street, everybody's decorated to the nines. And um, she was always a working mom. She commuted to the city and she felt like she missed a lot of her boys um, growing up. And they thought, you know, they spent time with dad. Dad's the cool parent. So she got a bunch of moms together and said, let's do a, a flash mob for Halloween. And so the town, a, what? a flash mob. So <laughs> they came out, they came out as moms who were never dancers, okay. who okay. practiced late at night in the driveways, in the basements. And um, they secretly learned to dance. Nobody knew about it except for the husbands, you know, so that they could stay where they were. Kids thought they were at PTA meetings or yoga class. And um, they came out and they did, you know, a flash mob to all the trick-or-treaters. And the town embraced it. And they wanted, the town expected them to do it the next year. So they thought if we do it next year, we should wrap our arms around a cause mm -hmm. and see if we could get, make some money. Wow. You forgot and the best part. How you dressed yourself up, how you put the face makeup and we're all zombies. Right. So so the moms come out dressed like zombies. And to this day, they're now, fast forward, that was 2016. 
about nine flash mobs later, um, several TV appearances. Oh, wow. um, we were on Kelly Clarkson this year. We had a Good Morning America, weren't you? Good Morning America, the Today Show. Um, we were we were on World News Tonight with David Muir this year, and um, we flash mob some radio stations that have their Monster Ball, and they came up and they're like, "Well, you know, we'll donate. Will you come and dance?" So we're like, "Okay." We got a bus, like a legit Greyhound bus. We had. Moms dressed like zombies. I didn't know any of this. You're killing me. No, right. this is awesome. So it, it is it, it is amazing because this grassroots bunch of non dancing moms who work, raise kids, teach in school. Yeah. You know, we have a couple grandmas, and what we did was we em embraced the Cancer Couch Foundation. We're very mm. passionate about cancer. Right. And how you firefighters, doing? moms, everybody. You're raising so lots of money. We have raised to date over four hundred thousand dollars. Wow, very good. For That's metastatic cool. breast cancer. That is so and cool. so um and so is there a website? But at the best time, we're having fun doing it, right? We're dressing yeah. like zombies, yeah. we're terrifying the neighborhood. We're we've been invited to New York City. We, is there a website? How do people So there is a website. This? It is okay. a great website. Okay. My sister will love me for this. So it's mombies, M O M B I E S dot org. And I'm going to show some of the dances or some of the TV appearances. But I will say one of the best ones was um, going to Fairfield University. And um, they went out for an ESPN halftime for uh, uh, ESPN Game of the Night. Okay. And uh, it was 50 moms. But they incorporated the cheerleaders who were willing to come out and learn a portion. Mm -hmm. And they incorporated the some of the singers in the Glee Club. But then the best part, I had several firefighters who came from the station and learned how to dance. We had some police officers. We had the pedi local pediatrician, some nurses, some alumni. Wow. And 125 people came together wow. and became a family. Wonderful. So it was very wow. similar. Yeah. There's like video and stuff on a website? There is video. Oh, boy. Yeah. yeah. I will be unrecognizable, so that's good. Okay. Uh, you yeah. can tell it you. Yeah, yeah. I'm gonna you can tell. Know. Yeah. Know it. Yeah. Without a doubt. Wow, that, that but, is great. So, anyways, yes, yeah, thank you for bringing that up. But you that know what? Fun. When I first saw that, it just, it's like, oh my God, look at this. I brought my wife over to watch yeah. it, and it's like, how cool yeah. is this? And the neat part was so Diane's fabulous assistant, Dana. Um, is from Trumbull, Connecticut. And this is in, it takes place in Fairfield, and I'm the only commuting mom from Florida. So I fly up, get several points. And um, I first meet Dana, who's doing a tremendous job, right, for, mm -hmm. for the magazine. Yeah. And um, when I said to her, like, oh, I go to Connecticut a lot. I, I do this dance thing for Halloween. And she goes, are you one of those mom bees? And so, like, we immediately, <laughs> connect, we immediately connected because she had seen it in, in her area. Oh, but um, Again, the small world. Right? Wonderful. The small world. Yeah, together. Small right. world. But thank you for that. that See that? Part. And but, look at this. Like, we're almost, right. like, through here. We've how, what, how much petrified. have we talked about, right? Right. We, before you got here, we were talking about clamming. Yeah. Not clamming, crabbing. Crabbing. We're talking about crabbing. 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 Right? How you make but, the crabs and the sauce. And, <laughs> but if you all circle back, which was which was an honor for you to have even asked me to come here, was what does FDIC mean to me? What is it like to be a volunteer? What is it like to have lineage here? Yes. Um, and and to not even have fire in my background, but to have in it in blood. my but to have it's it in, in my blood. blood, right? Absolutely. To have it in your lineage. So he was third generation. So that's all we know. That's that's how we grew up. So being able to volunteer here, mm -hmm. to be able to call people like you guys my extended family, mm -hmm. like that means everything to me. I would never give this up. Mm -hmm. um, a really quick, really quick, great story was that I kind of felt like it was slipping away because my connection remained my my firefighter T-shirts were my pajamas. So dad would teach, and back back in the day, he would teach for a T-shirt. He would teach for a T-shirt and dinner. That's what it would cost for him to come to the firehouse. So dad would come home with maybe two t-shirts and I'd go in the closet. I'd be like, oh, pajamas, extra large, right? Yep. So I'd put them on. Fast forward years later, there were two t-shirts left, right? Dad passed. There were no more, there was no more lectures. There were no more speaking engagements. And I'm like, wow, 20 years I'm sleeping in firefighter shirts. What am I going to do? And I was telling that to a speaker just casually. 
thought nothing of it. About a month later, every day, I would open my mailbox and firefighter shirts just started arriving in the mail from all over the country. So I wow. sent an email that said, hey, pass it to a friend, pass it to a friend. And so I now have a replenished stack from Arizona, New Mexico, Connecticut. Oh, man, um, you know, I was going to say, people are going to start sending you shirts. So and the other was thing amazing. Is, you, you might have a future in this little radio business. Yeah, here, I think very, so. Oh, no, I said I don't, I, I'm afraid to talk. You're, and you're, I yeah, you're stop. afraid to talk. Yes. <laughs> I have, uh, one more course. short question about yes. that time in Connecticut. Yes. No. How, I don't remember how long he was in Waterbury. And, and were you living here then when that so, happened? Or was that after later in life? So it was later in life. We were grown up and that's, we were, we were all more independent, you know, yep. um, doing our thing. And dad went from commuting on the Bell Parkway to taking a ferry, <laughs> right? To taking a ferry over on the, to, yes. to uh, Connecticut. And he said, you know, it was always a family decision. So fire engineering yep. was, what do you guys think? Uh, Waterbury, Connecticut, what do you guys think? And um, we were like, you wanted to be a chief. You, you got you to gotta do this. Go for it. We got you. So sometimes mom and dad would go over. He rented a house. He'd go Monday to Friday, um, unless there was something to do on the weekend. Yep. Um, I know he brought the bagpipes. He was passionate about bringing bagpipes there. Um, but uh, it I didn't get to experience Waterbury as much, but he made a difference. Yeah, we still have that Chiefs helmet, so it did make a difference. And, I, and uh, I heard a great story about your dad in Waterbury, and I'm going to paraphrase because I'm not sure if it's 100 percent true. They were trying to get more staffing, and they were in a meeting with the mayor or, mm -hmm. or the town count, whatever. And uh, your dad said to them, "Do you realize if we have a line of people firefighting to death, it will cost this, cost this town?" $10 million at the minimum. And we need more firefighters because that will help prevent it. And he wound up getting the firefighters, right? You are so, yep. so the police yep. chief asked me, he goes, I've been trying to get guys for years. I, I'm having the hardest time. He goes, how did you figure out $10 million? He goes, I made it up. Made it up. <laughs> made it up. Right. I was like, oh my God. Right. Oh my God. Right. That, that was like, and you know what? Yeah. Waterbury had no money. No, oh, we're very happy. It money. was it was scary. I mean, they lost the firefighter that fixed the brakes failed on the. On the oh, I remember on the that. Engine. They I know that one. It, it, really? it failed, and Waterbury's hilly. Yes, and um, and as far as the police department, it's not. There's lots of nasty neighborhoods yeah. there too, but yeah, the, the lost the brakes coming down a hill, ejected oh, a captain oh. out of the front window. Oh my God! How long ago was that? Long time. Late nineties, maybe. Early nineties. You know what? I don't remember. I'm old. Oh, yeah, <laughs> yeah. Kevin, did Lost you guys breaks. teach together? Yes, you did. Right? Your dad and I. Yes. Yeah. yeah, yeah. I enjoyed it quite a bit. We were doing some. We did forcible entry together, That's right. and we did some extrication together. Um, by the time we were doing the extrication, it was a little bit physically difficult for your dad. Yeah. So I would cut the cards. I would lecture and do things. I enjoyed my time with your dad very much. I told you that funny story. Yeah. Is it all right to yeah. tell you that one? Oh, yeah. So she said, give me a story about my dad. So the fires start to blend in the training blends, but the funny things stick out. So we were in, in uh, Florida, on one side of Florida. You guys lived on the West Coast. We were teaching somewhere on the East Coast. I don't know. Something. They, they call it Alligator Alley. Yes. Route 75. Yeah, that okay. Trail so it was a hot day. And uh, I was doing all the cut, and your dad was on his feet for a long time. It was like 2003. Okay. Um, oh, yeah. And uh, <laughs> we were exhausted. It was hot. We get in the car. We have to go right all the way across to, uh, like, Fort Myers, you know, to go oh, home to dad. It's Alligator uh, Alley. There's nothing on that nothing. stretch. This nothing. East, west, the across is the state. Yeah. There's nothing. Oh, yes. On that room. Yes. So so right. he's tired. And I'm like, hey, Tommy, I'll drive. I'm like, oh, I could drive. You know, he's getting out like as if I was saying he couldn't do it. I could drive. I'll drive. So I was like, are you sure you're getting tired? He says, you're tired too. I'm like, yeah. All right. So we go, we get in the car. We start driving across. Big excursion. We drive a big Ford excursion. And um, as I'm starting to like nod off a little bit, I see this big black thing in the road. And I'm half asleep. I'm looking. Looks like a manhole cover getting closer and closer. And all of a sudden, whack, we hit it. It's one of those huge turtles, you know? Ooh. So we squashed that. The vehicle's all over, almost goes off the road. And he, 
He straightens it out. And I'm like, you were falling asleep. He says, yeah, well, you were sleeping too. I'm like, I didn't even get to say, like, well, you were driving. I didn't say, I'm like, whatever. That was horrible. You were sleeping too. I hit him with that all the time. Yeah. Oh, that's funny. I love you, Dad, very much. That is funny. I missed him. Yeah. I did so. We I have to close. Yeah. I'm sorry. Yeah, yeah. You didn't want to say sorry. No. But one thing I want to say <laughs> again <laughs> is <laughs> don't forget about this. It's a very inexpensive book for sale right over here uh, on Fire Energy's website. Remember Tom Brennan, the man. You listen to stories here today mm -hmm. that are fading into the past. As long as people remember you, you will remain alive. And, That's right. Uh, mm -hmm. let's, right. Let's remember Tom and many other people can be too. Yes. And thank you so thank much. You did thank awesome. You. Kevin, thank you too. Thanks, Pat. Yeah. Thank you, brother. Good job. Thanks, Kevin. All the best.